Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual science classroom. This is your teacher, da, teacher Daryl Del Mundo. And now we are at the last leg of our third quarter. Welcome to week number seven. But before anything else, let us all pray. Thank you so much. And Ms. Secretary, kindly check the attendance for today. How many boys and how many girls do we have? And then and do not forget to send the total in our group chat. Okay? Do not forget that. That's very important. And of course, week number seven of third quarter is all about this interesting topic in physics. It's all about charges. Yes, you heard it right. So we are going to tackle about charges, charging, charged. Are you ready? So in these supplementary learning materials, this will help you to learn, number one, atom and its charges. For lesson number two, types of charging. So before we start, let's have a short look back. So in this part, all you have to do is to observe the illustration here on your right. So this is the direction. What you see on the right is a model of an atom, the basic unit of an element. So can you write what is described with what you see here? So you can write it on your paper or your notebook there at home. So for number one, for example, since you're done observing this illustration of the atom, the question is, do you see the central figure in an atom? Yes, what is the central figure of an atom? This part, okay? So, of course, your answer is yes. So, what do you call this central figure? Okay. Any idea? Okay, that's correct. That is a nucleus. So, that is the nucleus of the atom. Hindi lang ang cell ang may nucleus, but also the atom. Okay? So, the other questions... Okay, nasasagot niyan. So, to start with lesson number one, we are going to tackle about atom and its charges. And as a brief introduction, atom is the basic unit of an element. It is composed of protons, neutrons that are heavier than electrons. So, ibig sabihin, electrons, lighter siya, magaan. That is why the protons and neutrons combine and form nucleus of the atom. So, yung nandun sa nucleus ng atom ay ang protons and neutrons. Do not forget that. While electrons are extremely lightweight, ibig sabihin magaan, sobrang gaan, and it exist in a cloud orbiting the nucleus. So, para siyang nagpo-form ng cloud dahil sobrang bilis niya gumalaw. So, nakakapag-form siya ng cloud orbiting the nucleus. Pinatalibutan niya kasi yung nucleus. So, these particles carry with them the basic property of matter called electric charge. So these are the subatomic particles of an atom. Proton, neutrons, and electrons. And they have the basic property of matter that is called electric charge. So either positive or negative that governs how the particles are affected by an electric or magnetic field. Protons carry positive. Remember, protons positive. Okay, electrons carry negative electrons. Okay, that's negative. While neutrons, it has neutral charge or we can say no charge at all. Okay, parang magnet, di ba class? Ang magnet may positive at negative. Okay, same as with electrical charges. Electrical charges, we have positive charge, which is the proton. And then we have electrons, which is the negative charge. Okay. So, materials around us, generally neutral, but may either become positively charged or negatively charged. So, yung mga particles sa paligid natin, lahat yung neutral. Ibig sabihin, walang negative, walang positive. Okay? But, when they gain or lose electrons, pwede siyang maging positively charged or maging negatively charged. The process of gaining or losing electrons is called charging. So, charging ang tawag doon. Pag nag-receive siya at nag-let go siya ng electrons. So, have you experienced the same as the picture? Ito. Nakita niya yan? Di ba nakataas yung buhok niya? Nang humawak siya dun sa metal ball na yun. So, the science behind the hair raising 
experience will be explained through a simple activity in this learning material. So I will give you uh, some examples of this. Kung bakit ang asimbuhot niya. Okay? And it's all about charging. And also, I let us all remember that charges cannot be created nor be destroyed. Charges are only separated in electrification or charging of the objects like friction or rubbing, uh, like this. This is friction or rubbing. Induction and conduction. An object becomes negatively charged when it gains electrons. Nakita niyo to? Kapag ang atom nag-gain ng electrons, nagiging negatively charged. So, ibig sabihin, yung isang atom nadagdagan ng negative. Kaya, naging negatively charged siya. Okay? While an object becomes positively charged when it loses electrons. Kapag natanggalan ka naman, o yung atom natanggalan ng negatively charged na electrons, yung atom na yun magiging positively charged. So, it's all about gaining and losing electrons. Why? Because electrons is the moving part of an atom. Okay. So, ang electrons ang nagde-determine kung magiging positively charged or negatively charged ang isang atom. Nakatanggap siya ng electrons, magiging negatively charged. Matatanggalan siya ng electrons, magiging positively charged. Okay? Parang tao lang yan, class. Kapag masyado kang, masyado kang maraming nire-receive na negativity sa'yo, magiging negative rin ang mindset mo, right? O pag tinatanggal mo ang negativity sa buhay mo, magiging positive ang outlook mo sa life. Okay, so for lesson number two, let us discuss the different types of charging. Okay, so what is a charge? A charge is a property of the particles that make up the atom of an element. Remember, one element is equivalent to one atom. So for example, we have an element hydrogen. So an element of hydrogen is equivalent to one atom of hydrogen. Don't forget that. So an atom is made up of electrons that carry a negative charge, protons that carry a positive charge, and neutrons with a neutral charge. So let's have an example. A seven object, okay? A seven object with an equal number of protons and electrons in it has a neutral charge. So it determines the charge of the object. So an object is said to be charged when it's either gains or loses electrons. So let's have this example. This is atom A and this is atom B. So when atom A loses its electron and give it to B, as you can see, atom B becomes negatively charged because B gains electrons. So si B, dahil nakatanggap siya ng electron, naging negatively charged siya. While atom A becomes the positively charged kasi nabawasan siya ng negative. Okay? So that's how charging happens. So now we go are going to tackle about the different types of charging. Actually, because we have three. So this first type of charging is charging by friction. Okay, we have here a neutral gun, and then we have a neutral PVC pipe. So when we rub those neutral rag and PVC pipe, as you can see, some of the electrons from the rag transfer to the PVC pipe. Okay, so what happens is that the pipe becomes the negatively charged and the rag becomes positively charged. So by charging, you can what? Affect the other object. So the transfer of electrons from one uncharged object to another by rubbing the two objects together, that is by friction or charging by friction. Some electrons can move to the other object when rubbing, like this example, hair and balloon. Okay, so yung ibang negative charges dito sa buhok natin, napupunta dun sa balloon kapag kinuskus nyo yung balloon sa buhok nyo. That's why when rubbing, what happened? Naging negatively charged si balloon. Okay? Pero yung hair nyo, dahil nabawasan ng electrons, naging positively charged. Okay, so kapag mirap mo yung balloon sa buhok mo, dahil negatively charged na yung balloon, and your hair becomes positively charged, what happened is that, and malamang you will witness that your hair will attracted to the balloon. Kasi nga, naging negatively charged yung balloon at yung hair mo naman naging positively charged. So remember, sa law of attraction, that opposite attracts and the same repel. So dahil parehas 
uh, magkaiba yung kanilang charges. So, yung hair mo ngayon na attract dun sa negatively charged na hair para sa balong mo. Nagkaintindihan. So, ganun din sa charging. Opposite attracts while the same charges repel. Kaya kung napapansin nyo, class, dumikit yung hair or yung some hair follicles ng babae dun sa balloon. Kasi yung balloon negative at yung hair naging positively charge. So that's the first example of charging. While on the other hand, we have induction. This is charging by induction. So we have negatively charged rod and we have a metal sphere over here. So electrons move within the objects making the closest side oppositely charged. Yung opposite part lang niya yung nagiging charge. Ayan. As you can see, but there is no but direct contact between the two objects. Okay, as you can see here, there's a gap. So, charging by induction is where the charge object brought near but never contacted the object in charge. So, only the other part of that object becomes charge. Okay, so this is an example of induction. We have a charge rod, which is negatively charged, and then electroscope. And then when we put them close together, the other part becomes negatively charged. Okay? Only the half of it. Only the closest side ang magiging charge. That is induction. And we have conduction. Charging by conduction is when two objects are in contact. So we have negative charge rod over here. And then we have a metal ball. And when they contacted to each other, the metal ball will also becomes negative. So, electron transfer to the object making it the same charge. Charging by conduction involves the contact of a charged object to a neutral object. It is often called as charging by contact. And this is its example. There you go. You're familiar with this, right? And this is because of charging by conduction. That's why your hair will rise up. And these are the things for you to remember in week number 7 lesson. A charge is property of the particles that make up the atom of an element. While atom is made up of electrons that carries negative charge, protons that carry positive charge, and neutrons which has neutral charge. So an object with an equal number of protons and electrons, it has a neutral charge. Remember, everything around us is neutral. An excess of any of these particles determines the charge. So, lahat yan neutral, lahat yan no charge, but if it gains electrons, nagiging negatively charged. But if it loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. So, an object that loses electrons becomes what? Loses electrons. Positively charged. Okay? While when it gains electrons, it becomes negatively charged. So metals usually carry loosely bound electrons and they are known as conductors. Kaya madaling daluyan ng kuryente ang metals because they have loosely bound electrons. Mas madali matransfer. That's why they are good conductors of electricity. Diba? Kaya sa mga ginagamit natin sa mga windings, all of those are made up of metals. And there are three ways to charge. What are those? We have charging by friction, charging by induction, and charging by conduction. For objects like insulators, mga plastic, mga weak uh, conductors, mga tinatawag natin tong they are not good conductors of electricity and heat. Or sometimes, they cannot conduct. Okay? They can get charged by rubbing or friction. Katulad ng mga balloons, uh, rubber yan, di ba? Plastics. Try nyo yung plastic cover. Irab nyo ng irab. Tapos may, may small pieces of paper kayo. And it will attract. And then for metals, where there are more loosely bound electrons, they can get charged without contact by induction. For metals, they can also be charged, but by direct contact. That is conduction. So si induction, may gap. 
while conduction, direct contact. And let us see this one, electricity. Why lightning is important? So the answer is that without thunderstorms and lightning, the Earth atmosphere's electrical balance would disappear in five minutes. Remember, lightning also makes ozone-producing chemicals. And these chemicals plays a vital role when it comes to our ozone layer. So lightning is a very large electrical discharge caused by induction. Charges build up in storm clouds and they need a place to escape. So the path of escape of these charges to discharge to Earth. So dun sila na discharge to Earth. So hindi naman nakakadagdag ng ozone layer ang uh, lightning, but it plays a very important role when it comes to ozone producing chemicals. At least medyo natutulungan ito yung ozone layer na nasisira na diba? to protect us from the heat of the sun. So that's why lightning is very important and it is produced because of charging by induction. And do not forget to answer the following. Watch this video. You can rewatch it. And then answer lesson one, pages three to four, three for your free test. Okay. And then for lesson number two, pages five to seven and eight to nine for your post test. And do not forget to submit it or turn it in in your Google Classroom. Okay. And if you have any questions, if you have any clarifications, do not forget to reach me through my social media accounts, YouTube. If your messenger is not working, you can DM me in my Instagram and my Facebook page. Okay? And I hope you learned something for today's lesson. And let us all see to the next quarter, to our last quarter next week. So I hope everything is clear, everything is fine with you. That's the end of today's lesson. Goodbye and God bless you all. See you next time.